Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make these gorgeous pinwheel St. Petersburg stitch earrings using just a few little beads. It's a nice beginner's project that uses some size 15 seed beads, some two millimeter bicones, and I've got size 10 Preciosa seed beads, but you can also use Japanese size 11 seed beads. You're also gonna need an ear wire, a beading needle, and about a meter of beading thread per earring. Start by cutting a thread about a meter long and bringing a needle onto one end. We're gonna thread through one bead twice to create a stopper about six inches from the end of our thread. Once we've got our stopper bead in place, we're going to pick up four of our color A beads, followed by two of our color B beads, which I've got gold here. I'm gonna slide them all the way down to my stopper. Holding the thread nice and firm, I'm gonna thread through the third and fourth beads of the six just here, so the middle two just through there, so around from the top and back upwards towards the direction we're going. And that's gonna create a little loop. As we pull that tight, our thread will be looping around and holding these two little beads nice and neatly beside these two just here. Now we're gonna pick up a two mil bicone and one size 15 seed bead there. So you can see one two mil and one size 15. Now skipping the size 15 on the very, very end, we don't wanna pass through this bead. We're gonna use this as a little lug at the end of our thread here to lock these beads in place. So I'm gonna thread down through the bicone and through the first three seed beads, the three copper beads, but not that last little one at the very, very end. We pull our needle all the way through, trying to keep it nice and firm, and you'll see that little bead will just lug tightly onto the end, giving us a nice snug fit. If you like, you can reposition it just gently to get it sit really neatly on the end. Now we're going to step across into our next row. We'll pick up one more size 15 bead, and I'm gonna thread across from this bead here and into these two color B beads. So see, there's my little stopper. I'll thread all the way through and pull that nice and tight, locking them together. Next, I'll pick up two of my color B bead and two of my color A bead. Sliding my four beads down, I'm going to weave back around through these two beads just here. So the two topmost of the gold. So if you have a little look, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we're passing through the third and fourth beads. As we pull that nice and tight, it will pull those beads neatly beside and we can slide them down on top of the rest of our beads. Again, we're gonna pick up a two mil bicone and one size 15 just there on the end, slide them all the way down. And again, keeping our tension nice and firm, we're going to skip the size 15 and pass down through the two mil bicone and the first three seed beads only, not the bottom one, just the first three of my color B. Again, we'll pull that down nice and tight and lock them into place. So with my thread coming out of the third bead here, I'm going to pick up one size 15 seed bead 
and thread up through these two color A beads beside. Pull it nice and firm and give it a pull at this point to improve your tension so that everything is sitting quite firmly and quite neatly. I like to hold my thread between my uh, index and middle finger here so that I can keep my tension nice and tight at all times. So we're going to repeat that process again. We're going to pick up two of our A beads, two of our B beads, and slide them all the way down our thread. Like so. Hold it tight and pass again through the third and fourth seed beads in the same direction, looping around so that when we hold it tight and pull, the two color B beads will sit neatly beside our row of four A beads. Now we'll pick up one 2mm bicone and one size 15 seed bead and slide them all the way down to the end of our work. Skipping that last little size 15, thread down through the 2mm bicone and those three seed beads once again. So you can see we're adding little rows of color A, then color B, then color A. And finally, we'll step across into our next color B row by picking up a size 15 bead and threading through those two beads just there. Now that we're coming back out in position from the next row, we're going to repeat this process to continue adding rows in alternating colors until we have a total of 13 rows. So I've got 12 rows now. I'm going to complete my 13th just as I would as before. And you'll see I'm going to allow it to create the join for my 14th as well. So I'll pick up my two color A's and finally my last two color B beads. I'll slide them down and complete it exactly the same way as we have been all the way through. So threading so that the two A, uh, B beads will sit nice and neatly beside the A. I'll pick up my bicone slide it down, pick up one 15 bead, and then back down through the first, the two mil bicone and the first three seed beads. As we do that, you can see I've now got my, pick up my last little size 15, and I'll go up into those last two gold beads there, which is essentially the base of our 14th row. So because we've got 14 rows now, well, 13 and a half, you'll see it goes copper, gold, copper, gold, copper, gold, copper, gold, all the way. And this means we, when we finish this one just here, we can join it in a circle to create a nice seamless pattern of copper, then gold, then copper, then gold, and so forth. So now that I'm on my 14th row, I need to bring the two ends together. So if we have a look, we want our bicones to be on the outside. So we can bring them around one to the other. I'll flip it over the other way so that you can see it a little easier. So now that I've got it sitting nice and neatly in position, I'm going to pick up two of my gold beads and I'm going to thread them down and weave down into these two copper beads at the base. So towards my stopper. See that there? And I'll pass all the way through, which will join those two pieces side by side. Now to complete the process, I'll weave back into those two beads that I've just added just a moment ago. So picking them up with the needle, 
will just pass very gently through those two beads, like so. And as we pull it tight, keep your thread above your work so it doesn't get tangled, and just let it pull all the way nice and firm to complete the circle, just like this here. Now we'll pick up our last 2mm bicone, we'll slide it down into position and lock it in place with that final size 15 seed bead. We're going to go all the way down through the first three beads and that's going to bring us into position to complete the center of our circle, to make it a little firmer, a little more structure. Now that my circle is complete, I need to remove this little stopper bead here and replace it with a size 15. So my tail thread, I'll just ease my little stopper all the way off until eventually my thread is in position, just like so. Now that I've taken my stopper bead off of my tail thread, I can join these two St. Petersburg rows with one size 15 bead. So by going up into this bead, I'm only going to go through the first two beads just here, all the way through it, pulling my thread nice and tightly to join them with that size 15. Don't worry about the tail just now, we will get rid of that a bit later. We're going to follow this path all the way back around and finally end by coming out of our size 15. So I will pass back down, seeing as I'm coming out of this bead here, I'm gonna jump to the bead beside it in the row beside, adjacent. So I'll go into that bead and down through the first three seed beads. This brings me back in position near my size 15 so that I can thread into it and start joining the inside of my circle to firm it all up. So pull that tight and you can see now I'm coming out of this size 15 bead. Seeing as this is a row of gold beads, I need to pick up one gold bead and pass through the size 15 only towards those gold beads. So pass all the way through it, pull it tight and lock it in place. Now I'll pick up a copper bead because this next row is all copper. So we're going through and towards this copper bead here Pull that tight and let that come together and into position there. Now I'll pick up a gold and we're going to continue all the way around the circle picking up gold and copper beads one after the other and completing the inside of our little ring. Now that I'm about halfway through you can see this side is starting to become really firm. This one's still a bit floppy but it will firm up much more as we continue around the circle. So let's just keep going until we get all the way to the very, very end. So I'm adding my last copper bead in now. If you want, you can continue to go back around those beads to really get it just that little bit firmer. But you can see it's not entirely necessary, it becomes really solid and firm as we, look at that, holds its shape beautifully. As we continue to go round, it will get even tighter if you want to, but you know, it's up to you how firm you want it to be. If your tension is a little bit loose, feel free to continue around. If it's already nice and firm, you can just sort of leave it at this point. Once you feel confident that your pinwheel is nice and firm, just take your thread up and out of any of the bicones and finish exiting from one of the size 15s. So I'm going to pass through this size 15 and up into this row of copper beads just here. This is where I'm going to attach my ear wire to complete my finished design. 
So as I come up here, I'll just weave all the way through all of those beads in that edge and exit out the top just here. And finally, I'll pass through that size 15 right on the tip. So with my thread exiting from this size 15 bead at the edge, I'm going to pick up five more of my size 15 beads and I'm going to thread through this little bead looping around to create a little circle. So as I slide them down, you can see I'm going to be coming out the same direction as my thread started to create that small loop. So as I pull that tight, you can see it creates a small circle of beads that I can then thread through once more to get nice and secure. And this is how I'm going to attach my ear wire. So I'll go through it once again, all of the beads again, to get them nice and firm and secured. And I'll finish by going down through that last 15 one last time. And I'll finish by passing down back into my bicone and into my earring. So with my thread coming out between these two beads, I'm going to tie what's called a blanket stitch. I'm going to pass under the thread bridge between those beads and as I pull through it leaves a small loop of thread. I'm going to thread back through there and as I pull all the way through I'll just be very careful to make sure it creates a small knot between those beads just there and as I pull that tight that creates a small knot around my thread securing it off. Then I can just continue weaving around into the earring doing the same thing a few extra times. You can just weave wherever you see fit. You can use this as an opportunity to of course increase the tension. Uh, if you feel like your earring is a little bit loose in places you can sort of tie a few knots here and there just to really get everything is secured just like this here. There's one more little blanket stitch. Pull it tight to go nicely between those two little beads there. And then I'll just pass down into that last size 10. And take my scissors and cut it off. Now I'll do the same with my tail thread here. So I'll re-thread my needle onto my tail thread. And I'm going to weave around a few beads, just tying the occasional knot again to secure this thread as well. Once it's secure, bring in your scissors and very carefully cut off the excess thread. Now all we have to do is take one rose gold earring and you can either use a jump ring through here if you like, otherwise just open the base of your jump ring with a pair of pliers or just use your fingers if you prefer and thread it into this ring that we created with our size 15s. Then we'll just close our ear wire up And there we have one finished earring.